another thing which comes up in both of your books is that um, th different things happen outside of this place. Both your key characters have to get away in order to discover something. Um, the character in, in Dorit's book, she's in New York. And here, uh, uh, Uziah leaves Tel Aviv and, and, uh, and the settlements, Judea and Samaria, and goes up north somewhere, somewhere which I kind of recognize, but not quite, isn't, isn't, is never named. That they both of them got to go to this ex territoria somewhere else. Uh, there's a character, um, uh, Schnur, 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 oh, I'm reading it without the vowels, so <laughs> <laughs> who, he is an artist, again, he needs to break the barriers, uh, and so he goes off to Venice, and he spends his time creating Midrash for Israel, in art, in Venice, not here, and he talks about his time in Italy, and, and I quote, he says, Rome is like Jerusalem, just without the hassle. <laughs> Her stones remind me of Jerusalem. If only Jerusalem had more time and silence and fewer messiahs and redemptions that distract you from her beauty. Yes. It seems that Uziah needed to get away from distractions for a while. Yes, this, this uh, quotation is from Schneor. Yes. Uh, he lives in, in Venice. Um, uh, Uzia went to the north to a small village or something. Why? You know, in the perspective of people who live in the center of Israel, north, it's like, you know, it's vocation. It's, you have, you, you, there you can, it's quietness, you, you, it's quiet, you can, you can rest from all the noise, from all the fights, from everything. That's why. She had. A, she just divorced her husband. She she couldn't have. She have. She have no children. So she she has to. She 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 understands that she has to think all over about everything. So she goes. And in order to be able to think, she needs to leave the physical place. Maybe to breath. To breathe. To breathe. Mm -hmm. so, yes. To breathe. She needs. She needs a perspective. She needs, she needs a, perspective. A, a, a distance from everything, yes. Fascinating, and, and, and likewise, uh, Hilmi and, I've forgotten her name. Liat. Liat, because Liat is the first person uh, narrator, so she doesn't often say her, her own name. Um, she, she also, she finds herself in this ex-territoria. She's over in New York where stuff can happen. Um, but there, th there's also, what, what, I, what I noticed there is there's also an awareness that you can go to a different place and pretend it's reality for a little while until the geography itself hits you around the head. So I'd just like to share with you um, uh, a, a section where the land of New York um, addresses both the Israeli and the Palestinian, um, and New Yorkers will understand better than anyone. Winter shuffles the cards, jumbling us beyond recognition. Freezing cold, whimpering, nursing continuous colds and coughs, Hilmi and I, this is the, the Palestinian guy and the Israeli woman, are even more alike than we were before. In this deep, arctic, North American cold, we are both from the east, painfully Levantine. Our temporariness in New York, the mistrust and estrangement we have often felt towards the American way of life, grow sharper in the harsh weather, exposing how diasporic we are, how alien in this part of the planet. If we had considered ourselves citizens of the world, universal spirits with no dependence on mother tongues or political borders or geographical distance, if for a moment we had felt at home here, felt a sense of belonging, of being wanted, almost tempted to believe that the possibilities in this city really were unlimited, now the dark shadow of winter reminds us with a paralyzing clutch that New York is not just a state of mind. 
and that we are nothing but bodies with limited adaptability, not all that different from those other foreign creatures who were brought here from the southern hemisphere and housed in the Bronx Zoo, the ibex, the white oryx, the family of dromedary camels we saw one Sunday, animals that, if not for the greenhouses and controlled environments that mimic their natural habitat, would not survive this northern winter. We have all the right stamps in our passports. Our visas are valid. But sometimes it seems this winter has been recruited by the immigration authorities. And it is as rigid and uncompromising as they are, working with that courteous but unapproachable American efficiency to banish us from the country. This uh, fact that these two neighbors they have to cross two oceans to get to know one another, to look one to another in the eyes and, f and get close, to, to feel closeness within this distant. Or otherwise, they were so close back at home, and they are close when they go back at home. Um, the sense of homeland gets more clear the more the book tells about their experience at, at, at the northern America uh, winter. It's more clear that they have much more longing towards their Middle Eastern sun than to their Middle Eastern land, which makes homey and the, the, the term, the idea of homeland to be much more with the physical condition of being back at home and less with the soil underneath their ground. So um, you don't have to choose or define your perspective towards the, by your political point of view towards the fact that this is the same homeland. If you decide to have it cut into two states or to have it kept as a binational state, God forbid, I must add, because this is my <laughs> most horrific worry for Israel to not coming up with this decision to divide the land into two states. But more than that, um, it's still the same homeland that they miss. This, it's the same landscape, it's the same land, it's the same sun. It's same, same weather, yep. And, and, and apropos what you said about uh, settlers, readers, I do have few. Uh, I got Few. You have a lot. Yeah, I, I, yeah thank you. The few oh, wrote, I mean, I, the, friend, the few who had wrote me letters had, um, let's say three of them, had mentioned uh, one detail within the book who had, uh, was repeated on those three letters that made me, and I, I thought, I, when I see you, I'm going to tell you about it. Because um, Khilmi, when he goes back to his tribe, when he goes back to his mother's house in Ramallah, he decides to spend the summer outside of Ramallah. He also takes two steps back and overlooks his home uh, from a village northern, north to Ramallah, which is called Jifna. There he rents a house and spends the summer uh, enjoying um, rebuilding a, a nice garden that was uh, neglected in the backyard. And those three letters that I got from settlers who had written me, I read your book, I am myself a settler, I live in uh, the West Bank, it's not the term they chose. Um, but they did say, I must tell you that Jifna, the village where Khilmi spends his summer, uh, it, it, it appears in Pirkei Avot, it's called Gofna, and you have to know that Jifna is ours as well. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? There is a new writer, uh, no, not new, a detective writer, Liad Shoham, who, ju who just, uh, his book ju was just published. Uh, he, he writes uh, detective books, and the, in his uh, late, his, uh, the, uh, his latest you know, book? Yes, his latest book is about a murder who happened in a set settlement. The name is Gofna. 
And us too, right, when yeah. we when we um, uh, conquered the land, is, uh, we we kept the original <laughs> sound of the Arab village that was uh, previous to Israel uh, establishment. And this uh, Gofna and Jifna, they 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 ring the same ring. They, 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 on this ex-territory of the Jewish Agency Board of Governors, we have all, we also have these meetings. <laughs> um, that. The, the, the approach to land, and, and when, when Hilmi and Liat talk about sun, um, it seems that many of the younger characters in your book have a very different, um, it seems that there's, there's far more uh, weight attached to the spiritual meaning of being in this place. And that there seems to be, if you can tell us a little bit about the, the there seems to be also within this book a, a generational clash or an ideological clash about what we're doing here and why. There is an underground group in, inside my book that uh, write, um, write graffiti. Yeah, it it, it puts graffiti all, all over the country. All over. And, uh, and it which begins to turn violent and leads to arson attacks as well in the book. Because they believe that uh, here in the Israel is a holy land and the terms of, uh, for live here safely is to be high moral um, um, behaving or live, live with, uh, with high moral values. And when they, when they see, when they look at the television, they look all over institutions, all kind of religious and non-religious uh, political institutions, and they see many, many uh, uh, moral problems, so they, co they contest. They, they protest. They protest, yes. Protest against, we start with this graffiti and continue more and more violently ways. Why I am living in Gush Etzion? It's, it, it's a complexion of things. It's good education to my kids. It's bigger apartment than I can afford in, in the big city. Uh, and in, yes, and it's a feel of shlichut. Of, of a of, mission. Of commission, yes. Of being on mission. Um, and also, it's you know the romantic, simple thing. I open my window. I, I'm thinking about the Vida Melech and Ruth from Bethlehem and King David and Ruth. It's, it's it's all all this together.